Right, Alex. Here, Miss. Jemima. Who the hell is naming their kid Jemima? Yep, here, Miss. Steve. S Steve. Okay, does anyone know where Steve is? Are you sure today's lesson was a practical one? Yeah, bro, don't worry about it. It's all calm. Steve, where are you? You were meant to be here 20 minutes ago. I'm sorry, boss. Like a true official, I can't take any responsibility for my actions. Hey, yo, mad. This guy's good. <laughs> Yo guys, it is your boy Niran here, and you are watching FTW. This, of course, is the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. But what's been kicking? What the? YouTube, what are you doing? Uh, you said the word kicking, so that can't run violence, you see, so we're gonna have to age restrict this one as well. Are you mad? You just said kicking just then. Yeah, but we can do what we like and not have to explain it, you see. I swear that I'm gonna kick off. Oh my god. Well, there's yet more boxing action. SKSI made history fighting and beating two people in one night. KOing rapper Swarms and professional boxer Luis Alcaraz Pineda. Though calling him a pro is like calling me a professional footballer. I'm about to end this man's whole career. In truth, KSI probably had a harder time winning Division 1 than winning here. Elsewhere, and his brother Deji was victorious too. He was surprised to be at the winner's meal after his KO over Fousey Tube. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. Amongst others, JJ called out Tommy Fury. I'm looking forward to seeing Tommy scrambling for excuses not to fight him. I need the washing machine and dazzles, or whatever they call it. They use now, I don't know, they've more to do. Run away from dazzles. I'm not saying I'm a bad um, house homemaker. Now. On to the football though now, and we saw a mauling for Bournemouth as the newly promoted side was slapped 9 0 by Liverpool in a win matching a previous Premier League record. Alright, bro, when was kickoff for this one? Yeah, probably about every 10 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, no, seriously. Yeah, it was, uh, it was 3 p.m. Late August saw the return of Notting Hill Carnival, but it was Bournemouth getting bent over on game week four. Roberto Firmino grabbed two goals and three assists here, therefore racking up all of his contributions for the season. Alisson had nothing to do in this one, as Bournemouth players were desperately asking for possession back. Hey. Get back at the ball. And trust me, every Liverpool player was getting in on the act here. Joel Matip was on the bench asking Jurgen Klopp to come on at striker and grab a couple himself. Well, everyone was in on the act apart from Mo Salah. He can't be too happy getting back to see he only got three points for himself on fantasy football. You don't seem that happy that you've won. I'm so happy, believe me. And look, this defeat was so devastating that Jurgen even had sympathy for Bournemouth's boss, Scott Parker. I right, listen, sorry lad. Mate, honestly, I know. Nine. No, indeed. No, I meant nine as in the number. At least Southampton were there to comfort them after their history with nine nil defeats. It's a shithousery award for the Saints. Unfortunately for Scott, his board weren't so understanding, sacking him later that week. Scott's official statement was damning, and it's not surprising when he had absolutely no backing. Their transfer budget was 500 FIFA points for for God's sake. Here he is finding out he's spending money. Fuck off. Two and a half grand. He's only lost 9 nil once, for God's sake. I mean, that is pretty bad, but Ralph Hausenhurt will survive more at Southampton. Here is Scott going to confront the Saints manager, demanding answers. Hold on. I swear that's Ralph and them, man. Come. And it'll be even worse when he finds out that Steven Gerrard's still in the job. It's good news for Frank Lampard, though, seeing that he's not going to be the first to get the sack. This really is the cherry on top for Bournemouth. No, genuinely, I am actually happy this time. Yeah, no, but seriously, though, I am in trouble. Scott's at the job centre as we speak, but at least he's got his new H&M cardigan with him. To be honest, this was bad enough to get the sack, let's be real. You're the boss, not the captain, so why have you got an armband on? I can't legit believe he's out of there already. Four games in, what's he supposed to do against Arsenal, City and Liverpool? Poor Scott as well. He had intentions of going to the Bournemouth board and saying that we can fix it. We? <laughs> Bournemouth are still in the mud though. Dominic Solanke and Kiefer Moore are ready to get slapped 8-1 again next week. Gekko, we, we, we go again. We, we got there. We got there, baby. Give me a kiss. Uh, but on the other end of the spectrum, and this could be a turning point for Liverpool after a disappointing start to the season so far. Now, there's darker news coming out about Paul Pogba this week. The Juventus mid is finally out of United, but still can't avoid the news. This after a story of his own brother, Matthias, and a gang that he's involved with, attempting to extort 11 million euros from Paul and blackmail him. All I'm saying is, Graham Souness is definitely involved here. Look, I understand that, Jamie, but where's the money in all of this? Florentine Pogba's gonna find this difficult to defuse at the family Christmas 
Christmas dinner. Meanwhile, season two of the Pogmentary is going to be 18 plus rated. you got to feel so much for Paul here. Imagine the threats that he's getting. And from his own blood, Matthias took to TikTok and explained that Paul had apparently attempted to use a witch doctor to put a curse on French teammate Kylian Mbappe. Yaya Torre's experience with curses, so he helped Matthias out here. Well, until he had to read out the ingredients. If you is with this, with, if you would be with this. No, I'm not big head, but... <laughs> Killian must be confused as well. He'll want Pogba out until he realises he's not actually the boss of the French national team. He'll be fed up when he sees the witch doctor come through the door. The reality is someone put a curse on Matthias already to be shit at football. Apparently a lot of this came from Matthias wanting money and financial support through Paul's career. You're just jealous that United rejected you and sent you off to Panachocala Rovers. This actually stinks. All because Paul didn't want to give him his online banking details. And he's going to want to backtrack on this one when Paul sues him for 36 million quid. I said what I said. I stand behind what I said. I probably may have you know, on my hindsight, could have kept it to myself and not made those words public, but... Back to the on-pitch action, though, and there was a mega comeback again from Manchester City, from 2-0 down to win 4-2 against Crystal Palace, and it was inspired by a first City hat-trick from Erling Haaland. His celebrations were wild. <laughs> But it all started though with an early John Stone's own goal to put Palace ahead. He was just trying to get subbed off early so he could go to Notting Hill Carnival. General John Stone. His performance on the grime stage was solid to be fair. Edison was almost caught Loris carriusing, but luckily for him and Man City, this goal after his error was controversially ruled out. But the second half was all different though. Here's Erling's team talk at half time. A bit shit, but that's all it is. Because after Bernardo Silva's goal, Erling booted up properly in the 50th minute. Borussia Dortmund fans were reminiscing of times when he was playing for them and slapping up Armenia Bielfield away. He was special. Patrick Vieira's gonna be trying to enact revenge when he sees the Norwegian afterwards. And you can't blame him. These were his eagles in the second half. The league leaders, though, are still Arsenal, as they kept up their 100% record with a slim victory versus Fulham. They were kept on their toes until a late Gabriel goal, where pundits reckoned they were over-celebrating. <laughs> Steady, Connor. It's Fulham. They haven't won the title tonight. They've won a London derby. Enjoy it. Mm. Mm. No, I this don't is, understand this. Is, this this is overhyped. Fulham. This is overhyped. They've won nothing. Here we go again. The celebration police. The festivity feds. The jubilation justice league. They've just won a game late on for God's sake. I hate people like this. How do you want them to celebrate a goal? Tosin Adara Bioyo's hardly there like, for fuck's sake lads, it's only us. During these goal celebrations though, and a steward thought Alexander Zinchenko was a pitch invader. I know he had no right getting into Man City's team, but this seems a little bit harsh. Here's Eddie and Ketir explaining his lack of clinical goal scoring. Oh, well, I mean, I was, yeah, I was, I was close to finishing. But then, you know, it's a matter of economics. I, I couldn't. Meanwhile, Serb Alexander Mitrovic is firmly walking on his way to a 36-goal Premier League season. United won for the second week in a row with a slender 1-0 win over Southampton. Casemiro's crying tears of joy knowing he might not actually be playing locomotive Plovdiv in Europe next season. But it could have been a different story if VAR had spotted McTominay playing volleyball in the area. Now we know why he was practicing these kick-ups. Speaking of skills and Cristiano Ronaldo was not too convinced by Donny van der Beek's stepovers. Lisandro Martinez and Rafael Varane look good again, but let's be real, Rafael's joints are made of apple crumble. He's gonna get injured and Lisandro will be straight out of the car park when he sees Maguire back in training. Meanwhile, there was disappointment for Southampton. Here's Ralph Hasenhurtl seeing he's not responsible for a 9-0 on the results sheet, only to still lose 1-0 anyway. And more transfer news for United. They've all but completed a move for Brazilian winger Anthony. Now before we say anything about the quality of the player, United have to stop signing Brazilians with names of Brexit voters. Fred, now Anthony. <laughs> Breaking news. News just in. Manchester United signed Paul. Back in my day. I can't wait for United to be 3-1 down against Chelsea. Only for Anthony to bring out a 360 no-scope skill move. He's a very good player and a very skillful one at that. But surely they're overpaying here. United fans don't care. They'll be gassing him up after every single skill. <laughs> I'm looking forward to meeting Premier League defenders, however. The Jogo Benito celebrations aren't going to be as good after a run-in with Lewis Dunk. But I'm sure he will help you. United.
by flip-flapping a steward by the touchline. Tottenham played Nottingham Forest and won 2-0 thanks to a Harry Kane brace. The England captain did miss a penalty though, with another being saved by Dean Henderson. Tell you what, this Dean lad's okay, you know. Forest loss can only mean another 47 new signings before deadline day. Jesse Lingard's dance troupe is looking very strong come September. But a big talking point on social media here was Richarlison's kick-ups late on at the end of the game to toy with Forest defenders, then getting clamped by them. People were giving him sticks, saying it was disrespectful, Former Liverpool midfielder Diddy Haman said it was an outrage, only for Richarlison to reply, cry more. It's a shithousery award for the Tottenham forward. He's received a pretty punchy text from Jamie Carragher this morning. Hope you get hit by a bus today, you fucking wanker. But honestly, lads, what are we doing here? Why are we trying to suck the fun out of football? This sort of thing is entertaining, and him getting crashed afterwards is also entertaining. That's been a brilliant midweek for Southampton, who grabbed a 2-1 win against Chelsea. Thomas Tuchel was not happy chasing after Kai Havertz after a dismal display. Meanwhile, in the tunnel before the game, when a Southampton mascot managed to get the better of Cesar as Billy Quetta, Aspi did not take it very well. I'm gonna shake your hand. I wanna shake his hand. It was an even worse week for Conor Gallagher, who managed to get himself sent off after 30 minutes against Leicester. Tuchel's gonna have him gone within a week. It's all part of the plan, though. He's trying to force a move back to Crystal Palace on loan so he can stat pad again. Yes! Knew I could do it. Get me out of this shit up! Meanwhile, Wolves drew 1-1 with Newcastle this week, and Ruben Neves scored a banger again. He literally relishes the opportunity when he's 47 yards out and he hears shoot from the crowd. Oh, go on, man. Raul Jimenez scored and celebrated with an eye patch, only for the goal to be disallowed by VAR. We've got a football fan with Dirty Dog 69 on the back of his shirt. Check his hard drive. Over at Everton, and they've signed Neil Mopay from Brighton. They weren't able to register him for the midweek game because of Bank Holiday Monday and nobody being in work to do the job for him. Someone at the registration office clearly had a personal vendetta. Mopo, you are an absolute disgrace. Lucas Paqueta has joined West Ham from Lyon. He's a great little signing, a saucy player, Declan Spice, if you will. But he was yellow carder for trying to attempt to rainbow flick back in France, and Didi Haman will be having an aneurysm about him joining the Premier League. Meanwhile, one dad and United fan wants his son to follow in his footballing footsteps, but a youngster has made his own decision. Which one do you choose? Oh! See, I told you to swap the sides. Okay, Kobe. Which one are you picking? Which one are you picking? Which one are you picking? Now, in Spain and Barcelona seem as if they are going to be able to register Jules Koundé in time, but at the expense of a different summer signing, Pablo Torre. And after signing Valde de Alcata, Bartak took the opportunity to remind the Catalan side that they don't have to worry about these registration problems. At Atletico Madrid, and they are apparently being investigated, because after agreeing to a clause in Antoine Griezmann's loan contract that suggested if he played a certain percentage of games for more than 30 minutes, they'd have to sign him permanently, they are on purpose playing him for just less than 30 minutes each time. The reality is, it's actually just because it's illegal for his trim to be on show for more than 30 minutes without it being indecent exposure. Now in France and Paris Saint-Germain drop their first points of the season after a 1-1 draw with Monaco. Maybe the witch doctor is already having an effect. Listen, big man, you're sacked. No, no, I know you're the boss here, but that, that's not how this works. Meanwhile, Lionel Messi was a little bit distracted. Look, at least Killian is still getting packed on FIFA, that's all I can say. Now, Leon are having a bit of a problem with their ultras at the moment. A selection of their players are currently wearing green boots due to a deal done with the club, but their ultras are not best pleased because green represents Leon's sworn enemies, Son Etienne. I mean, how far does this go? You're literally playing on green grass, lads. Leon ultras are going to be devastated when they find out the hedges in the car park aren't red and blue. Now, speaking of Son Etienne and their former midfielder, Mardi Kamara, he left Son Etienne off the back of a 6-0 loss, only to join Brest and lose 7 nil in his first game for them. Meanwhile in the third tier and this miss for Martigue is an absolute shocker. In Germany and Jan Sommer set a saves record with 19 in a 1-1 draw versus Bayern for Borussia Mönchengladbach. This is an absolutely mental performance here. Especially for a man 10 years older than Bayern boss Julian Nagelsmann. Now for one of Bayern's missed opportunities they were appreciating a beautiful through ball to create a one-on-one -on -one opportunity but they cut off the video pretty conveniently to which Gladbach replied asking 
asking what happened next. It's a shousery award for the German side. Staying in the Bundesliga and Union Berlin won 6-1 against Schalke off of just one XG. Did they score a touchdown or something? Meanwhile at Bochum and they tweeted about Ritsu Doan's cross come shot. Is who? In Italy and Samuel Umtiti has finally left Barcelona for Italian side Lecce and he was emotional to be around fans that actually love him. Either that or he was in pain seeing the graphics that was made for his transfer. Was this actually designed on a dishwasher or something? But that now brings us to our goals of the week and once again we've got some stunners. The first two though are more situational as first of all we have a last minute bicycle kick from Slovan Bratislava to keep them in European competition. In the Vanarama National League and we head to Eastleigh where Danny Whitehall managed to score a free kick from his own half in the 90th minute only to then score again from a set piece just a few minutes later and win his side the game dramatically. And finally we have got an absolute stunner coming from Argentina where Pablo Perez might have scored a push gas contender. Salzburg were drawn against Chelsea in the group stages of the Champions League and their boss celebrated with a no-look handshake to commemorate Thomas Tuchel and Antonio Conte's touchline clash. In Turkey, in this Fenerbahce free kick routine didn't go to plan. Wow! In Kosovo and Balkani made history by becoming the first Kosovan side to ever reach the group stages of a European tournament, getting through to the Conference League. And we've got a similar story coming out of FC Vaduz who play in the Swiss League but are actually based in Liechtenstein and they became the first Liechtensteiner team to do the very same. At Dundee United and they lost 9-0 to Celtic in the Scottish Premier League and their boss lost his job this week. I mean, there's copy in Bournemouth's homework and then there's this really. Hello all and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> <laughs> and that concludes the beautiful game. Closer to home though, and Fulham lost to Crawley in the League Cup earlier on last week, and this corner for them didn't go to plan. Jed Wallace scored for West Brom this week and celebrated with a beautiful Superman celebration at Birmingham City, and they've grabbed Hannibal Mejbri in on loan from Manchester United and announced his signing on Twitter with a parody of the Hannibal Lecter film. Good evening. Meanwhile, American forward Daryl Dyke confessed his confusion on Twitter because apparently he's been using dishwasher tablets to wash his clothes for eight months without realizing. The man's been going around smelling like Finnish quantum power balls. Over in Turkey, there was crazy scenes at Bolaspor against Alton Ordu where three penalties were missed in one game, including one 90th minute effort. In Sweden, we've got incredible scenes in the under 17s league over there where a goalkeeper took advantage of a scheduled drinks break to collect the off the referee, run the entire length of the pitch and put the ball into an empty net whilst his opposition weren't looking. At John Book Hyundai Motors and we've got an interesting celebration here for the K-League. In Scotland and at Air United and we've got the most disgusting clip of the week and who says Harry Kane doesn't influence people. In Denmark and Alborg's goalkeeper waited just three minutes to provide this howler directly from a goal kick in a mistake that would ultimately cost this side a 1-0 defeat. Mexico revealed their away kit for this year's World Cup and it looks like they're about to get eliminated in red light, green light. In Uruguay, and what is the best thing to do to calm a situation down? Absolutely shot put a football at somebody else. In Brazil and at Fortaleza versus Sao Paulo, we've got a spy here trying to get the low down on some opposition tactics. In Saudi Arabia and Vincent Abu Bakar scored for Al Nazar, only for the lights to go off immediately. Meanwhile, we've got live scenes of out in the car park at the ground. Whoa! <laughs> <Good enough. laughs> What's the best way to stay in the good books of FIFA, I hear you cry? Pretend to polish and shine the bald head of its president, Gianni Infantino. In South Africa and at Kaiser Chiefs, Itumalen Kune is quite frankly taking the piss at this point. Chest controlling a shot coming towards him instead of catching it. Back at Dundee United and what on earth is Diego Maradona doing at their training facility? In Brazil and one forward was a little bit too keen to try and score directly from kickoff. Taking an attempt here before the referee had even 
and blown for the start of the game. Meanwhile, at the Solomon Islands, and these fans had a great view of the football match going on below them, and an even better view of a calamitous own goal scored moments later. Now there is time for the moment you've all been waiting for, because over in Romania, and this time around, we've actually got quite a wholesome story coming from this beautiful nation. Today, we're hearing about a young aspiring coach called Florent Yana, who has been playing championship manager and football manager his entire life. Well, he's been wanting to be a part of the game for the longest amount of time, and this year, after snagging a new assistant manager job, he will be in the database for the first time in his career, and he's gassed about it. In Mexico, though, now, and Pachuca won 4-1 this week. The celebration for their second was getting very acrobatic. There were impressive scenes in the crowd over at Gremio in Brazil, where this fan might genuinely be deserving of a contract there after this showboating. Not quite the same level of footballing capabilities over in El Salvador, where Elias Rivas was lucky enough to have this goal bounce off him and go in. In the Finnish second division, and there's weird goals going on there as well. Siirtää Rasikalle, Rasika, jalka vapaaksi, laukaus lähtee. In Brazil again, and you don't want to mess with this referee because he's not going to take any shit from anybody. Big man, it's not even a yellow. <clears throat> you don't have to stare at me like. Yeah, no, it's okay. Just send me off if you want to. I won't. In Morocco, and seemingly the new best place to get a trim is in the away end. The one in Guatemala and the award for the scariest mascot in the world probably goes to this nightmare-inducing kangaroo. Now that it's time for Still Nil Nil, and you guys know the score by now, this is the segment of the show where I bring you to the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And this time, we're going very exotic, because we head over to Mozambique, where in some kind of domestic league over there, I don't particularly know what the backstory is, but clearly somebody's not around to open up the gates for the sets of players to arrive at the pitch that they need to go to, and instead, the players are having to climb over a wall to get this one underway. Imagine having to do Takeshi's Castle just to get to the dressing room. On to the weird stuff though now. Over over in Indonesia. Yep, you guessed it, they're back again. We've got the incredible story of a girlfriend who was not best pleased at her partner playing football instead of spending time with her, so she physically pitch invaded in the middle of the game to take him back home. In the New Zealand Southern League though now, and Christchurch won their division in the most dramatic fashion possible. They needed an eight goal swing on the final day of the season, an eight nil victory to secure the league title, and scored four goals late on in the game to earn a 10 nil win and take home the Southern League trophy. Elsewhere, and former Brazilian manager Mano Menezes has taken up a new hobby, and that is breeding cows. He's named one of them Messi, and it went on to win some kind of competition this week. But finally, we end on two contrasting stories here. First of all, we have Barcelona forward Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who was the victim of a violent robbery at his family home this week. Robbers with weapons threatened him and his wife, and even inflicted some pain and damage on Alba himself. My best wishes are with him. Hopefully his injuries aren't aren't too bad because that is a traumatic experience. But in better news, and Sebastian Haller, the Borussia Dortmund striker, is now on the road to recovery after undergoing his first phase of treatment. And we'll hopefully see him back on a football pitch very soon. That though is going to wrap up football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at OfficialFNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye.